Um, we're gonna wait for a few more people to hop on since you know I hit go like two seconds ago. Um, and I'm a little, we're a little slow today, or rather, we're running late. It's been a busy day. It's been a really busy day. Hello. Liz has some stuff. We oh. have other stuff. What are we forgetting? Where are they? That's a good question. I got this, Jen. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it all out. We're kind of just making things work. I gotta see if Liz wound my bobbin or destroyed my machine. Probably the one or one or the other. So let us know how you're doing. The download for the block we're gonna work on tonight is available on our website. It's a free download. So you can sew along with us. Um it's probably really helpful if, if you haven't done this before for you to try and go along with us because foundation paper piecing is so backwards from everything else we do in quilting that it it confuses a lot of people and so it's good to be able to ask your questions maybe while you're struggling with it instead of on your own later this right? is true okay should we where are we I don't know. Do, do. I'm gonna make sure my machine sews. I'm gonna pull up my phone so that I sure the iron's on. That would be great. Oh, hello, Dulce. How are you? Yay. Okay. Let's uh -huh. get going. Oh, yay. Okay. So, foundation paper piecing. Do you know what it is? It's yeah. a little tricky. So, People say paper piecing. Well, paper piecing, my first question is always like, English or foundation? And then they look at me like I'm a snob. But right. they're two very, very, they're not even very kind of the same. Different practices. Other than they both use paper. So and not kind, even the same kind of paper. Yes. Um, foundation paper piecing. We print our pattern on paper and we use the lines of the paper to create the finished product. Um, foundation piece. up. Foundation paper piecing comes in really handy on intricate blocks, blocks that need to be really accurate or that you just weird angles. Right, or, or really just abstracted. A whole blocks. bunch of tiny pieces. Um, Jen and I are both doing Moda blockheads. We've done at least one for sure, one block so far for sure that was foundation paper piecing. And you probably have seen it, it was the love block. Right. And this can be done with traditional piecing. But it's fun to get the funky angles and everything, and that's way easier to do on paper. Right. Um, another one, one of our blocks for motive, blah, blockheads, Block was a heart, and I decided to make a heart, but I made a rainbow heart. And this would be a lot, this is doable with traditional piecing, because you just get really scrappy and then piece your heart out of it. Um, but it was really easy with foundation paper piecing Super easy too. with foundation And piecing. you get this fun, super scrappy, crazy finished product. Right, which is always fun. So those are a couple blocks. I'm gonna show you one of Jen's projects that isn't normally here. It's only here because she recently did a class. It's normally in her husband's office because she made it for him. Right. If you work for the Department of Corrections, you may have seen it. This is, <laughs> here Jen, move. All right, this is um, Mount Hood. It's a Violet Craft Elevated Abstractions pattern. It is gorgeous, and it looks nothing like the original pattern, but I'll show you why. Here, hold it for a second. Um, the pattern itself is done up in purples. So if you've seen the pattern in the shop, not quite the same. Jen took her own crazy color scheme to it, but it's beautiful. But it's fun because it's where you can get all the different colors and fabric variations in the, um, in the mountain, in the snow, and her moon makes me think of Eric Carle because I have small children right. and we read his books. Very hungry caterpillar. You guys yeah. know him. Anyway, found but this him. is uh, English paper piecing. Foundation. Foundation paper piecing. Blah. We're not English Project. tonight. Project. Not English tonight. Not English. Um, another one, uh, Violet Craft does a lot of these. In fact, I'm working on her unicorn one right now. Um, this is another one of hers. It's a desert mirage. Super and fun. It's a lot of fun. We actually have kits for this one. But uh, yeah. anyway, lots of fun projects, crazy things you can do with this. So many fun thing. things you can do with it. So I, um, I don't know. I just have such a fun time with it. I 
like to learn new things. My Whenever I'm looking for something new that's just for me or a new project, I like something that's a challenge. Um, so that's where I go on this. Uh, so there's all, all kinds of fun challenges. Anyway, this is what we're going to make tonight. I made this one at home this morning because I'm me and I'm a dork. I fussy cut my little bee to be in the center because why not? I, I could and I did. Um, I'm using fewer colors tonight just to simplify it for you guys. But this little block, I love it because I can get these perfect corners. I don't lose any of my points. And it's because literally all I'm going to do is sew on the line, which we can all do, right? Yeah. You can sew on a line. So you don't even have to watch our foot. It's awesome. This you've seen is similar to a pineapple block. It's not quite the same, but similar. Right. A lot of pineapple quilts and pineapple blocks are done. A lot of log cabins are done foundation piece. Yeah, even log cabins. A lot of what I do foundation piece tends to be abstracted. Um, except for that terra quilt. That, that wasn't was abstracted. That was just really odd angles. It was just or unusually really precise. Angles. But it, it does help with precision. Um, anyway, so this is what we're going to make tonight. If you'll notice in the video description, I put cutting instructions. You're welcome to just grab scraps as we go. Um, with the abstracted patterns, like the mountain, you can't necessarily cut everything ahead of time. Don't try. Don't. You but will frustrate yourself. But ones like fabric. this, you can totally cut your pieces out ahead of time, which really speeds up the process of putting them together. So for these geese, because these are supposed to be wild geese, these geese blocks, I cut, um, or I'm going to cut, Liz cut for me, eight two and three quarter inch squares, and I cut them in half diagonally. And if you've ever been to one of my classes, you know how much I hate the concept of cutting something in half diagonally before we sew it. But because I'm sewing through paper for this, it's totally fine. Um, there's no point wasting the square. So for this, totally just... Make your triangles. It's going to be okay. Um, for these ones in here, I cut like a two, two and a half inch square. Two and a half is plenty big. And I cut it in half, you know, once diagonally. So when I say once diagonally, I mean here to here, cut it in half. Uh, yeah. This center Don't pick square. pick any random diagonal. No, cut. not any random diagonal. This center square, cut a two inch square. These ones, I wrote down to cut... Oh, one and three quarter inch strips. This one like four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. When you layer it over the top, you're going to notice all these pieces are way too big. And that's because rule number one with foundation paper piecing is cut everything big. Absolutely. If you're a fabric miser, which I mean, honestly, I, I am. am. I like to be very prudent with how I use my fabric. That's a word for it. Um, you're going to, you're going to be frustrated because you're going to end up pulling out a lot of seams. Because it's really easy it to... It's painful if you try and... Not leave seam allowances or you're a little short. Um, yeah, it gets really easy especially to mess up. Especially on abstracted patterns. Especially on abstracted patterns. Cut it extra big. Plan on just... When you're, it, when you're miserly with it. Just, just plan on using a lot of fabric. Um, it's just the name of the game. And it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll be prudent on my next project's fabric. So you'll notice when you lay those pieces on, they're way big. And I had you do it that way. On purpose. Yes. On purpose. Okay. Let me make you get started. So when we get started on this. Okay. The tools. Really the tools. Fast. You need something that will help you cut an accurate quarter of an inch. This is called a magic wand. We primarily use that for taking inventory here in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> but it has this it's like a highlighter yeah seriously it has this fantastic line through the middle and it's a quarter of an inch on the other side the rulers that i hear the most about that everyone raves about are the out of quarter rulers there's the long one and the short we're one we're gonna go ahead and use the short one we're gonna tonight. go ahead and use this one they are they have their quarter inch marked and they are tapered to help you fold your paper and you'll see why in a second and that's a handy tool it is a handy tool so um Yes, Actually, Serena loves her out-of-order ruler. She right, she told me I had to use it, so I'm going to make that I'm clear. Gonna, I'm going to do it just because I'm going to be obedient for a minute. This Did has I to go next to that, something? and that's... Don't you think? Sure. No? No, okay. it's fine. Okay, let's do it. Okay, sorry, last-minute pattern adjustment. 
Okay, so to get started. Oh, next thing. So for printing this off, you probably Ooh, just printed it off on computer paper. Um, computer paper works fine. Honestly, that's what I'm using for my cow abstraction that I'm doing at home I'm right using now. I'm a unicorn. But it's because I needed legal size sheets of paper and I don't have this legal this size. Legal? Yeah. Mine's like the 11 by no, 17. No, no, that's what I mean. I mean, it's more than legal. It's, it's the 11 by 17 inch huge. paper. Yeah, my husband uh, photocopied them for me at work. Because I'm like, I can get paper. this at 11 by 14, but not 11 by 17. Yeah. So, so this, if you are able to do this project or a project on 8.5 by 11 paper, um, or by 14. This is holding eight. Um, this is fantastic. It's a newspaper weight. But it's actually a little tougher. If I have to pull out a seam, a lot of times it survives that. Um, whereas the computer paper doesn't. It's um, You don't have to shorten your stitch quite as much to keep you from pulling stitches too loose when yeah. you Honestly, take Honestly, it's just, paper and, it's, and it's easier on your machine to sew through. So it's a good project product if you're doing the So when I did paper. that Terra quilt, if you've been in the shop and you've seen that big king size block of the month the we've got, um, I used a whole ream of this plus a little bit to do that quilt. That was worth it. But it's and totally it's worth not, it. It's, it's not that bad. It's like $14 for the, like the, the hybrid of paper. Sheets. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Unless you're doing a king size quilt, that ream of paper is going to last a little while. Anyway, let's get started. Um, this printed side that you see right here, this is the wrong side. So when your block is all done, like this one right here, I started taking a few of these out. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. You are going to sew on the printed side. You are going to be work. looking at the wrong side when you sew, and it's gonna finish out right over here, okay? Yes. So it just, it seems all kinds of backwards, but just hang in with me. It's not. You'll notice all of the pieces are numbered. So we have a one, two, three, four, five. If you can count, you can do this. Because you're the first piece we're gonna place is one, and then we're gonna do two, then three, then four, then five, then six. Do you see where we're going? Um, that's how that's gonna work. It's pretty basic. So pretty basic. Um, all right, I'm gonna get started on this, and please, please, please ask questions. Liz is reading comments, Sarita is reading comments. So we should be able to catch them and answer them as we go. Okay, so the first seam is the one people screw up on the most. This is true. Always. I have to relearn it every time. I've, I've taught this class a few times, and it's the one everybody messes up on. So this is the most important placement. If I, if I hold this up to the light, I can see my dark lines right here, and I just want to place this right here. Now you can either place it and you know, just stick a pin in it and keep it out of the way. I also brought my uh, fabric glue because sometimes I'll just glue the first piece and let it stay where it is so that the pin is out of my way. So it's one little dot of glue, it's not permanent glue. It's no big deal, right? Yes. So then piece number one is the only piece you're gonna put down where the right side is facing you. The rest of them when you put them down the wrong side is facing you, okay? Right side, wrong side. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go on to piece number two here. So I take my ruler and I go ahead and I fold it back on that line between pieces one and two. Bonnie, a light table can be really handy with this. I prefer to do paper piecing in the daylight so that when I hold my paper up, I can see through it clearly. A light table will do the same thing. So yes, um, oh, if you if have, you a, have if you a light, light table, table, great. Um, though honestly, I only use it for piece number one. I don't, which think is it's... why I don't usually pull it out. Um, yeah. okay. It's not necessary, but it is. Helpful. So I pressed the other way, and now I'm going to fold it back with me looking at the printed side of the paper. And I'm going to show you why I do this. Um, a lot of people just will place their next piece and then trim the excess afterwards. I like to trim my seam allowance before I place the next block and the next piece. And the reason I do that is because it helps me know exactly where to put this next piece. So because I trimmed that to a two inch size, I have like almost nothing to trim, but we're going to pretend I trimmed that. Okay. I have to show you what this ruler does. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see it. it I'm certain you can't. No, not the taper. There is a lip right here. Right, so okay. it locks in. That's your quarter inch. 
So when you've got your fabric folded, it locks in right where that lip is. If you have a block lock, you'll be familiar with this. And then you've got okay. that quarter of an inch. So, so that's the cool. feature. Okay, so because this is, we can see my folded line here. I'm going to take my wrong side here and just lay it approximately, approximately in, the in the middle. You know, get the point. I can see the point on the back right here. So I'll get the point facing there. I line it up with that line I trimmed. So I know I have a quarter inch here, a quarter inch there. Now, if you want to check where's my ruler, and make sure that this piece is big enough, you can always fold it back and make sure that you've gone past the point out here. Now, remember, you're not just going to be trimming to that point. You still need a quarter inch seam allowance beyond, beyond that. that. So just because you get to the line doesn't mean it's big enough. You need to have at least a quarter of an inch beyond the line. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in this. I am putting it in the wrong side. I'll pull it out as I stitch. Um, part of the reason I am going to pull it out as I stitch is one, I don't like sewing over pins simply because you can do a lot of damage to your machine. Even if it works well, 99, you know, thousand times out of a hundred thousand times, that hundred thousand stitch might just cost you a few hundred dollars or more. All right. The next thing is when we're foundation piecing, because we're going to be sewing through paper and we're also going to have to rip this paper out, shorten your stitch length. Yes. If, even shorter. Even than normal shorter. Stitch length. So when I have people do normal piecing, I tell them to stitch it about a two on their computerized, computerized machines. machines. On this one, I'm like usually you're at between 15 and 18. Mm -hmm. For this, I'm to at least 20. If you're on a computer, you know, a newer machine, you're going to be like 1.8. Better yet, 1.5. Short stitches, Short guys. Short stitches. And yes, that does make it a demon to pull out seams. Also, but it's start important. and stop in the right place. Do not start early. Do not go past the line Don't that you're Don't go past on. the line. Don't go start early. Just going to tell you that now. You're just going to have to pull stitches. So you start exactly where the corner is and end exactly where the next corner is. Right. We don't sew over. No sewing yep. over. Until you get to the very last round and then you can. Right. But inside the block, unless it's, yes, don't. Don't do it. Don't You'll do it. unpick stitches. I do it every time I unpick stitches. Well, because we think, oh, I can sew past. No, you can't. Every time. No, you can't. All so, right. And for the compulsive chain piecer, this is painful, but it's going to waste just, thread. It's I'm going to waste thread and, and it's going to break my heart. Okay. So... To get your needle in the right your place, yep. I drop my needle first. I haven't gone through, I haven't pushed down, but I got my needle right at the top point right here. Can I move these things? So people can oh move? yeah, why don't you move my junk? Do a couple stitches, hold out my pin, and a lot of times I'll do that final stitch or two by hand, just to get it right where I want it. Trim, trim. I'm going to be trimming tails all night, I swear it. Good. And now we just press open. A lot Start of out. paper piece out. Sorry, that's what I meant. A lot of paper piecing can be done with finger pressing, by the way. But I'm a presser. Um, Or if you've seen the wooden pressing, I've got one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. The wooden pressing thingy. Um, but it is important to press. Please press. Don't skip it. Um. Now, so we finished, we've got a one right here and a two right there. So a one, a two. Now we're going to move on to a three, which is this top one right here. And I'm going to show you what I mean by pre-trimming. Now I'm going to, with me facing the wrong side or the printed side of my pattern, I'm going to fold it back on that line. And if you can see here, I've got this extra right here. I'm going to go ahead and Take my add a quarter ruler and trim. So all I have left now is that quarter inch seam. And that way I know exactly where to put piece number three. All right. We're done. I will show you. Um, this is the press a pressing tool. This is Adidas Sitars from Laundry Basket Quilts. There's um, ones that are rollers out there. I'll show you how they work. Um, they are really handy for things like this. Right. I have a little. I have a little iron and a little pressing mat, um, about seven machine. inches away from my sewing machine. So 
I haven't found a need for those, but that's because that's the setup of my sewing room. Let's see, you just press it down and you're pretty much good to go there. Right, it's not it's not a bad press. Yeah, it can, it does the job. Now, because it's, Hello, I, I, I know last time I said no steam um, I when I press, brownies. but I don't use steam on this at all because I'm dealing with paper too. Yeah. All right, so now we're, we've done number three, right? One, two, we're gonna move on to number four right there. So again, I like to pick these projects that have like 30 some odd pieces when I teach this because I want to make you repeat it over and over and over again to drill it into your heads. Sorry about it's that. It's good. Repetition is good for you. It's the way to learn things. So for that, I can tell I didn't fold it quite right. There we go. I fixed it. All right. So I pre-trim. I have my quarter inch seam allowance there. So when I lay this back out, I'm going to take my piece number four and lay it right sides facing with that center block. And then again, you can always double check and make sure your piece is big enough by folding it back on itself. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to cover this A4 spot plus at least a quarter of an inch beyond, at least. which it does. It it's does. Plenty it's plenty big. Um, but I like them plenty big for this. It just, it's no far less point. frustrating to waste fabric on this than it is to consistently cut them too small. Right. And then you end up wasting more fabric. Right. I did that the other day on one of my Corona pieces. Or cow pieces. It's not really Corona. It's called Corona. Um, cow abstractions. Anyway. And it was a big piece. You know, it was one of the pieces that was like eight and a half by eleven and a half. Yeah, and so you try and be a little stingy because you don't want to waste any more than you But have instead, to. that piece was too small. I had to pull the seam out and cut another bigger piece and then try and have a use for the big piece that's not the right size. So in the end, I wasted more fabric and my machine came unthreaded by... Um, Did you get to the end? No. By uh, me being stingy. I didn't get to the end. So yeah, it's, it's super frustrating. Um, yeah, to have I to try and be stingy with fabric when foundation paper piecing, and it never works well for me. Ever. No, so just just don't is right. my recommendation. Except that this is a project that you're going to use. This is some probably extra. the most precise cutting I've done seen with most English paper piecing. Foundation. This foundation. I'm sorry. Um, this or a log cabin are about the only way to get really precise piecing. If you're doing anything with some sort of an abstract shape, you're going to use plenty of extra. And, um, you know, use yeah. those scraps. Make dog beds. Fantastic. There are ways to use them up. There are great ways to use and them up. And even when I have big chunks, then I can save it and cut it into a two-inch square and have it in my scrap stash. Right. Or your leader ender. Make a leader ender project. Yes. There you go. Which I just finished. Did you finish one? Actually, so I've been working on my Alice in Glass rainbow pattern. And um, I managed to go home and completely finish piecing my uh, cottontail table runner as leaders and enders. <laughs> For your Alice in Glass For my Alice in Glass rainbow. <laughs> because this is why I work on more than one pattern, a project at a time. But yeah, my cottontail bunnies became leaders and enders for my rainbow. And in the meantime, my rainbow's not done, but my cottontail table runner just finished getting quilted. <laughs> so, all right, again, pre-trim. We're just going to keep doing this. But yeah. please, please, ask us your, ask us your questions. How is yours working? How is yours coming? Who's trying this? I want to know who's actually trying. Yeah, is anybody At actually home? sewing along with me, or am I, like, by myself here? Yeah, I don't know. Because... That would be fun to know. It would be fun to know. I'd like to see what yeah. you're doing. My if comments are slightly delayed. I don't know why. But yeah, show us a picture of what you're doing in, your, in the comments, too. Because right. that would be fun. That would be fun. Because then I could actually see it. Right. See, and eventually I get lazy and I stop pinning. Yeah. Be careful about that. Yeah, you got to make sure that they don't shift on you. Because that's the thing is now you put it underneath the paper where you can't see the fabric. Right. And that is the challenge is, mm -hmm. I mean, when I taught my last class in my last two pieces that I was putting on mine personally, I uh, got 
the flap like caught over in my sewing. So I had to take it out twice uh -huh. in a Christine's row. Christine's sewing half square triangles. Oh, half square triangles are fun, Christine. I have sewn so many half square triangles. Shocking. Oh, well, you're making a whole quilt out of half square triangles, so. I, I am making a whole quilt out of half square triangles. That's on you. That is fun. All right, so we finished pieces one through five. Ooh, yay, Bonnie. Try it. I want to see after you and now, try it out. Now we're going to go on to number six. For me, I'm switching to this blue color. You're welcome to do whatever you want. I want to see yours. Do, do, it's do, under do, you. Do, do, do. I, I shouldn't have a pink cutting that. It's throwing her off. It's really throwing me off. I got pink everywhere right now. Her rotary cutter. Okay, see, so now you can see why I like to pre-trim. Now this is a of pre bunch of fabric left there. Um, and if I were to put this Ooh. all the way here, I would not have enough to cover my full triangle there. My full, like, goose. Goose. Geese. Geese. Goose. Whatever it is. Triangle. It's actually a triangle. Right. So, again, quarter inch. <laughs> <laughs> People Christine's liking all of your pink. All my there pink. This is it's this is your happy place, huh, Christine? Jen's pink, got a pink, pink rotary pink, pink, cutter pink. and mat and ruler. There's pink in our little rainbow scrappy tin. Right? We're we're the just covered in pink. Pink day, apparently. I didn't I didn't mean to. It, we just I wanted to cheer you up, Christine. That's all. Yeah, it's totally intentional. It was totally intentional. We were thinking of you. All right, again, I'm going to start at the point. I'm not going to go beyond, before. I'm not going to go after. I'm going to start at the point. A lot of times I do the first stitch or two um, manually because, well, they're easy to do on this machine. Foundation paper piecing, you have no options of what direction to press. Nope, no no options. Okay. I love when people ask if they can press open. No. I've asked people if they can, yeah, people have asked, can I do this? Can I press to the dark side? What? No. Oh, I did you get asked press. that. They were using a white, but I need to press it to the dark side, and it's not happening. Okay, yes. You're folding on the line. So that black line, the sew line, is also the fold On the line. project is where you're going to fold. You're going to fold exactly on the line, and then you're going to cut, trim a quarter okay. of an inch past Tell me if line. I get too close. I want to show you guys this. Do you see how my seam ends up exactly on that point? That's because I sewed on the line. That so doesn't happen by accident. The line. I sewed right on this line right here. And so I didn't lose my corner and my seam is exactly there. Ooh. Yeah. That's why foundation paper piecing is precise. It's awesome. There's nothing about this particular block that couldn't be done with traditional piecing. However, okay. it's going to be more accurate this way. Yeah, the paper also adds a stabilizing factor. It does I mean, because and this is something where stretches, because I'm no because I'm paper piecing, I did not bother to pre-starch my fabric, which we talked about the other night. Yeah. I knew I normally do press it and um I'll and clean you'll clean up after my messes. Yeah, I normally do. You know, <laughs> Sally's become addicted to foundation paper piecing, and we're happy about that. It's so pretty. It's so fun, isn't it, Sally? You know what? You know what's fun about foundation piecing, especially if you're somebody who struggles to cut accurately. Guess Ooh. what? You don't have to do with foundation piecing. You don't have to cut accurately. No, not even kind no. of important. Just you know, cut big enough and you're fine. Yeah. Accuracy is not the. So you just gotta be able to sew a straight line. And sometimes it can be a little bit harder to get a good grip because the paper can be a little slippery. So I'm normally a pedal to the metal. No, I go slower on this stress. one. Uh, but this is something I go slowly on. And if you're getting to the end and you need like a half a stitch, just lift up your foot and move it back a little bit. Don't I go do beyond. That. Don't go short. Yay, Kathy. Just lift it up. Yeah, it's... You really, at this point, do All not right. want to go past. Let me show you what I did. I'm going to show you a mistake. Ready? 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 <laughs> I didn't keep that out of the way. So I caught my previous piece in this piece. It happens. Did you bring a seam ripper? I did. See the green handle thing? Hmm, look at that. It's because seam rippers should always be in your supply bag. I don't care who you are and what you're doing. So I'm just going to pull out half of this seam and get this out of the way. Oh, I didn't 
pulled back. Yeah, put it out. You didn't stay up and out of the way. So that's something that does happen. I was actually saying that's what happened in my last class. The piece got in the way. What you can do to keep that from happening, I'll show you in just a second. You once. can pin it open. Yeah, I'll just pin it up and out of the way. So once I get this out of my way. But it takes a minute to unpick because her stitches are because tiny. Because my stitches are tiny. Yes. But, oh well. C'est la vie. We're fine. See, everything's fine. It's all better. Never happened. Now I'm just going to take a pin and keep that little guy out of my way. But the reason that happened is as, as I was going to put that into my machine, it, flopped it down. got caught probably on the bed and flopped down. So make sure you're in the right spot. So open it up. We're there. We're in a good place. Repair the damage and we'll move on. Yep. No point, no point crying over spilled milk, right? We just... Nobody's spilling milk around Nobody's here. spilling milk around here. Alright, I'm gonna let you do that because my machine got threaded again and I'm gonna figure out what's going on real quick. With your machine? Or it keeps coming the... unthreaded. I think my tension's weird. Your tension's way tight. It's way tight. Well, that's because you're outside the disc. Oh, well that would be it. Maybe. No, it's just really tight. Alright, I'll take care of that. You pre-trim. I'll deal with this. Where were you? A7? I have to pay attention to what she was doing. Oh, that's better. Mm. Okay, Serena, I kind of love this out of quarter ruler. I told you. No, okay, like it would help if I cut all the way through the fabric. So, okay, I'm not, I'm not a gadgets person. <laughs> um, I say that I'm getting to be more of a gadgets person, but something has to be really worth getting for me to think it's awesome and get. Uh, I mean, that's what happens when you're a quilter on a budget, right? Yeah. Um, Sarita said, why don't you have an add a quarter ruler when we were getting the things out for tonight? And I said, I don't need one. I just use the quarter inch mark on my uh, regular ruler. And she said, but if you love it, paper piecing and add a quarter ruler, it's going to change your life. And we said, okay, well, I guess I'll use one. See, I almost did it again. I caught myself. Okay. I'm going to tell you why I just found that so cool. Because I'm holding it this way with the tapered edge to fold the fabric. And I fold the fabric and then I need to trim. And you just go like, choo -choo. <laughs> and it's right there. I have to turn it around or whatever. It's just like, flip over. There we go. You see a tiny cutting mat and a tiny pressing station. And you couldn't foundation paper piece. Unless you are doing the uniform abstractions that I am. And or the cow. this big. But something like this but yeah, something is like totally this. a small space project. Yes. The, where's the unicorn one? I don't know. Let me find it. I'll show you guys what I'm working on. You can show me your unicorn. I'll let you. Because I have to do six projects at a time, clearly. Well, you know, you might get bored. <laughs> You're so funny. I don't know. Maybe. Sometimes we get bored, right? Oh, mom says the out of quarter ruler is essential once you've used one. Well, she might be right. She might be right. Don't tell her I said that. She's, oh, she's, she's, watching. she's watching. Oh, great. My husband's watching. Ah. She said that's when you use the long one is for the bigger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay. This is the unicorn abstractions. Um, It's a big one. Ooh, yes, we should, Christine. Let's add that to the list. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, this is a 60 by 60 quilt. It uses a whole bunch of different colors and I think about 10 Essex linens, half of which are metallic, which is fun. Super awesome. And on her website, she has extensions so you can make it 80 by 80. So my plan has been to finish making it for my daughter, she's eight, my eight year old daughter's bed, but she'll probably be 10. By the time I get it done. Oh, come on. You just can't um, do it. Okay, Bonnie, the long one is 12 inches. Answering that question. So the 12 inches and 6 inches are the two lengths that we have. Um, Yeah, mom's always right, except for when she's not. That's accurate. We love mom. Okay. Yes, you guys, you're all right. Out of quarters a must. I seriously haven't used one before because I just use my regular ruler, but I can totally see why these are the same. 
Um, could you close your rotary blade so you don't slice my finger off? My kids aren't here. They're not. Well, I just, I expect you to be a grown up. I didn't know it was open. Just kidding. Actually, I'll, you should always show you show your rotary blade. Um, my blade at home. This is my travel one, and it's a different style. My one at home, I have to squeeze to make it work at all. So, I'm not. Oh, four subtractions. Ooh. Ooh. Calling for another one. All right. I saw that one this morning. It's in a cart. All right, we're gonna move on to a different shape. So while Liz gets that, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna move on to number 10, which is this piece down here, this long one. So I'm gonna be using these fun black and white little roses. And you can tell them that when I start sewing again. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna draw her straight line. Get my straight line, right? Flip, square, trim it. Seriously, the pre-trimming is a lifesaver. It. I didn't do it for a long time, and when I learned that method, me. it makes a big difference. And I know most people don't teach it that way, but I waste a lot less fabric, and I'm a lot more accurate about where I place it. Well, and it's if I do faster that. to place the next block when you know exactly Plus, where to put that edge. And you don't accidentally end up with way too much bulk in a section. So really, it's true. I I just think it's helpful. Sometimes I teach your things. For subtractions, sadly there's not a fantastic picture of this one available with the pattern. It's another Violet Craft, as always. Some great forest animals, some plants. Um, there's a snail, you guys. The mouse is adorable. My mom's been working on this one for a while. The background is a metallic The Essex. background is a metallic Essex with gold, and then it uses all these gorgeous colors of cone and cotton, and it's just... They're, really, they're really just pretty. lovely, soft pretty. solids. Beautiful. So I pretty. love this palette. Me too. Too many things, you guys. I want to make them all. And, you know, there's just there's just not that much time, which is rather yeah. unfortunate. Just can't. I know. But yeah, Mom's been working on that one. She's got quite a few of them done. Yeah, she does. So. Oh, sorry, Mom. <laughs> there's not a good picture on it. It's hard to show on a, this setting. See, I'm going to show it again. Ready? Ta-da! See how I didn't lose my tip? Because you sew on the line. I love it. This is why I love this game. So we're going to do all four of those long, straight pieces first. So we're going to rotate and go on to number 11. And my ruler is upside down. How many pieces down. are there in this? 33. 30 some odd. 33. 11 out of 33. That's a third of the way done, you guys. Wow. We're not so bad. Woo we're not so bad. Um, probably gonna tell her to go fast. Just I'll go faster. Um. Anyway, I'll let you keep talking. Try my drink though, because I'm parched. I'm dying inside, folks. I'm dying. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you about removing paper while she keeps going. Okay. First off, on most blocks, this one included. There's this fantastic. A border around the outside of the block a quarter of an inch out around the outside of the block that is your seam allowance do not cut it off right the solid line is your sew line now for I also find a lot of blocks that do not have that line okay and in those cases you have to add it right make okay, it so pay yourself. attention to your seam allowance line it is there for a reason do not cut it off mm -hmm. second I, um, well, I have seen people cut it off and then like on the Moda blockheads, people were like, my block's half an inch short. I was like, you, you trimmed your seam allowance off. So yeah. Then it doesn't quite work. Yep. So anyway, it's, it's funny there that works. for a reason. Leave it on until you're ready to sew it. You can see Jen I added these. a little border. Jen added a border to hers. And so you can and see that it's still here. Now, when we go to remove pieces. One of the perks of this type of paper is that your pieces are come out easier. Okay. Um, regular papers, tweezers. they come out fine too. Tweezers work. I just like to try and get my finger in there or something in mm -hmm. there. The fabric and the, the, the stitching and the folding help it tear. It's perforated now and it's folded, but don't pull. Okay. Yeah. Don't just very, yeah. very, don't just very yeah. gently pull the fabric, the paper off. If you've reused regular paper, you're going to have to be gentle. You might fold it back and forth a few times. 
Right, you remember when you were a kid and you, like, cut paper in half by folding it, like, Several back times. and forth three times? Just be very gentle with it. You don't want to be pulling up stitches. Because right. if your stitches are too big or if it's stuck somewhere, see, I'm kind of having to get in there a little bit with my finger. There's a spot here that doesn't quite want to come out, the paper. Um, these The tweezers work great to get in underneath there. If, if you rip it off and you need to get to a corner. Yeah. Um, tweezers can be good to get the little bits and pieces. That I'm are not the over. only person who keeps sewing room tweezers, am I? Uh, I keep a hemostat in my sewing room. Oh. Is that the same thing? Similar. Tweezers have a sharper tip. Yeah. Okay, well... <laughs> A hemostat pulled out my son's tooth the other day. <laughs> you used your sewing hemostat to remove a tooth? I absolutely did. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it took about half a second. It worked great. <laughs> These pliers. It's so much more accurate and not dirty because it didn't come out of the garage. Right? Yeah. My, my son was my fan. <laughs> and uh, all the kids in my house all know what a hemostat is now. But Hey, well, education. it was effective. Um, anyway, this is actually kind of fun too. I like taking the paper out. Yeah. Because it, I don't know why. Is Maybe it makes me feel, yeah. It's like, what? It's therapeutic. Yeah. It's that tedious, like, little task that's, I don't know, makes you feel good. So my husband is about weeding the garden. Yes. He loves to weed. He just sits out there and sits on his stool and weeds. Yep. Because it's, maybe it's mindless, I don't know. Man, it's not. Yeah. But even in this, on this paper, some pieces are coming come out easier than others. Right. But it's kind of fun because then you get to start exposing the back. And all of a sudden you look like the best quilter ever because your seams are all totally perfect. And then you can show people, like, look what I did. Right? Look how <laughs> awesome I am. You got to scoot over a little bit though, baby. Apparently, I'm in Jen's way. But, but you'll also see, I'm going to show you a spot in here of Jen's. You're going to show my mistakes? It's my mistake. Oh, okay. I'm like, um, you can. I'm, yeah, maybe kind I'm of tough enough to make mistakes. Okay. I'm going to show you. Sometimes when our pieces get a little close, you can see where her seam allowance it got a little ended up being a little, little scantish. A little right there. Sorry. Um, and... We all end up with pieces that look like that, but um, that's why you want to make sure you got plenty of fabric. Right. This is going to survive. It's going to be okay, but if your whole block is made of one eighth inch seam allowances, you it might will not survive. struggle. So, but that happens to all of us, and that's when you know how close you got or if you were too close. Was that on my center? Uh, no. Oh. I haven't gone to the center yet. Oh. I'm like, I know that one got a little skinned because I was like, Fussy cut and trying to get it around. Yep. It happens. Yep. Um, yes. Uh, Mom says freight check. Freight check fixes that. Yeah, she pre trims before she, Jen, Kathy, Jen pre trims before she places each block. Okay, watch, watch me do it, Kathy. So it's every single time before you place the block. Every time. I'm coming back to do the next one and I'll show you. Ah, uh, Terry, I always got ideas for foundation paper piecing. All right, so this one right here is where I'm going. I don't need those. And if I try to just place this guy, like right around here, I'm more likely to get off, okay? I'm more likely to have a problem. So instead, I just fold it back on that line right in front of A15. And I trim. And she's going to trim all those big corners all of off of All those that. big corners off. Now I have a nice straight line that I can place this on. I'm going to scoot that over because I'm going to want to aim my triangle at the center of the square. And then that's going to be just where I want it. So yes, every time, her first round, it wasn't really an important thing to do. Well, because, because it's it a one and a half inch finished square. She I wasn't, cut it at two inches. She wasn't so. really trimming anything off. Um, now this point, I really am where you're cutting all those corners off. Yeah. Just our advice would be to pre-trim every time. Um, you, it's just easier to place the blocks. I'm a lot of, not a lot of tutorials to show you to pre-trim. Um, 
but yes, I find placement a lot easier, um, especially if you're not using a light box. If you're using a light box, then it's not as big of a deal. But machine's being weird. Um, it also yeah, it just keeps it more accurate, and you manage the bulk because what happens a lot if you don't pre-trim is then you're gonna fold the next one, and then you end up with huge pieces, tons underneath. of extra fabric underneath here, and they get pinned under, and then you can't trim them off. Right, and so there's too much fabric hanging out in the back of the quilt. Right. You don't want that. Piles are no good. Well, they're just not helpful. No, they just make a mess. So, like, honestly, these tails are killing me. They're killing me. <laughs> it's painful. It's definitely a different process to go from regular piecing to this because, yeah, you have to have these way more thread. And Jen and I are both compulsive chain piecers who don't like to waste thread. Mm -hmm. And so it's, yeah, all of a sudden there's tails everywhere. Thread tails. Let's move it around so it's coming off different. I think that was part of it. Because it was awful. giving me trouble yeah. winding the bobbin, too. Was it? Yeah. Maybe that will work a little better. Sorry, guys. I don't usually have trouble with that machine, but today I am. Because, you know, I'm on live video. So, naturally, right? That's how life works? Anybody else? Yep. Totally. How my life works. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Oh, wait. She's getting closer. I'm getting there. But, yeah, we just keep going around and around. Um, follow it in order. I know sometimes it looks like, well, that one's not a big deal. And once in a while, it's not. Well, and, and honestly, but... sometimes, I'm going to tell you, you think you know where you're going, and so you stop reading the directions. Um, so the block I teach when I do my class is a rose. And when we do the rose, we, we're working just clockwise the whole time, right? Except for the last ten. You do two in the same spot. And, um... I've had more than one person who's, you know, because this these are pieces like 20 through 30, so we've been sewing for a while now, who, they know what they're doing, they're feeling good, so they keep going, and they stop reading. <laughs> and then they mess up. And then we have to pull out the last 10 pieces and get it in there. So, you still want to read. Oh, wait. So I just finished pulling out all the pa pa uh, paper paper in the back of Jen's block. So you can see the back of it now from her original block. And just like my grandma taught me with cross stitch, and I'm not that good at it, the back should look just as good as the front. That's what I remember being told, and I remember never, ever living up to that. But that's what's fun. The back can look just as good as the front, and it looks exactly like the front. Right, so. just duller. Duller, yeah. Duller. It's not quite as vibrant as the front is. But, yeah, please don't quilt it with the paper still in. Oh, please okay? no. Don't expect that just to go away in the wash. Um, should you worry about the pinholes? No. Nope. Nope. Pin all you want. It, um, it's not going to destroy the paper from being able to work, and it's definitely not going to destroy the fabric. So, pin away. If you're concerned about that, I use really fine pins. I love my fine because pins. Because I don't like having to shove thick pins through my fabric. Um, mm -hmm. I like pins that just glide in really easily, but that means I use really fine pins. Mm -hmm. And that's all about preference. Again, a lot of quilting pins are quite a bit heavier than what I choose to use. Right, I mostly use silk pins. These ones are pretty fine, or really sharp. Yeah, they're, they're nice how... and sharp, they're a little bit thicker than what I use. Are these the quilting pins? Uh, yeah. These are the Magic Pins quilting pins. The long ones with the pink head. Um, and they are thicker than what I use, but they're nice and sharp, so they go in easily. Right. Um, Terry, the paper we're using is the, the Carol, Carol Dokes. Dokes foundation paper. Um, it's got that nice lightweight to it, so it's easier to take in and out than regular printer paper. Well, and it, it and tolerates the folding. It tolerates the folding. And, and the sewing. I think it's easier to see through. It is. It's a little lighter weight, so it is easier to see through when it's, you know, when you need to see through it. Yep. So, it's good paper. It's handy. And to me, it's worth it. Like I said, it's $15 a package. That's 100 sheets. Uh, it, 
for me, the simplification factor makes it worth it. It's definitely more expensive than printer paper. Right. I won't pretend like it's not. Right. But um, it's really easy just to put into your printer at home or to take to the copy place or to whatever it is you need to do to print your pattern. Mm hmm So. I have heard complaints from people that a lot of the foundation paper piecing patterns that you buy are printed on both sides and now I have to go pay for photocopies on top of it. And um, there's a reason for that. I want to tell people that if you didn't go pay for photocopies, you used up your pattern and if you make a mistake, you can't fix it. Right. And well, I like to have my pattern still intact when I'm and, done. And if you read the, the actual pattern in there, you know, like Violet Craft has that in hers. She does it specifically so that you can't, if it's your first time, inadvertently make the mistake of destroying your pattern. Yes. It prevents you from destroying the product you paid for. Yes. Which is so nice that yes. they're looking out for us. So, yes, there is an additional cost usually going to a But, to but okay, but, I mean, if you go to, like, Office Depot, you're going to pay more. But I went to, like, the little mom-and-pop copy store by my house, and... For that big, huge legal size, it's 18 cents a sheet. I paid like $5 to reprint my cow pattern. Yeah. And it's, and it's my pattern, and I get to keep it forever because I didn't destroy it. Yeah. And she has it written on there that you're allowed to make the copy for personal use. So if they ask you if it's copyrighted, just show them just that. Just print the whole pattern. Which is what I did. Okay. The first block, you took the paper off. Yeah. Don't take the paper off till you are done, done, done with yes. the block. Yes. Yes. No. Um. So yeah, now you're like, oh, she could take the paper off the middle. Yeah, she could. First of all, the paper is easiest to pull off from the outside in. Yeah, work your way out to in. Um. And the um, more sides that are removed already, the easier it is to take them. And like off. I said, the paper's giving it a lot of good firmness and structure to work with. Mm -hmm. And you'll lose that if you gradually take the paper off, and you could potentially get you know out of place. Right. So yeah. Paper all comes off at the end. Right. Definitely. Jen's getting closer to the outer. I'm on 21. Line. I'm getting there. If I did not hold a straight line. That was don't, not Don't straight. go too fast. Yes. Pay attention. This is, you know what's fun about this, even though it's short, look, slide. Sl yeah, it slides right along the paper. All right, Sarita, I need to take one of these home. Thanks. Guess I'm buying a ruler tonight. So what happens when you try new handy dandy tools <laughs> and you're like, oh, I need that. Yeah, it's not like I'm not working on a big foundation piece project at home. I you want the big one or the all. short one? Probably want the big one. Or both. Sarita says one. Sarita says I need both. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I got to finish my, uh... Oh, you found it! You can't see me. Thank you. I was looking for this. This is another seam roller, like for um, pressing hand, without heat. hand pressing without heat. So it's got that nice heavy wooden roller. You just roll it on there, and then you can get your nice seam. Lots and lots. So many of the foundation paper piecing tutorials that I see on YouTube and places, they use these kind of pressing tools. Partially because if you're using regular printer paper, eventually the iron can. It make can, your paper it can mess weird. with the uh, uh, ink. Um, um, so, I don't have that problem on this. I don't have the problem with the iron messing with the ink on this paper, but on the mm -hmm. printer paper, it can smudge it. So that's where your non-heat inducing pressing tools can be really useful yep. for this project. Don't mess it up. I know. I'm getting lazy. I gotta not get lazy. Nope. You're too close. I'm too close. I'm too close. Are you guys coming? I don't know. Who's removed stitches yet? Anybody besides yes. me needed to use a seam ripper? <laughs> Fess Just up. Jen. Come on. Jen's the up. only one that's messed up so far. I gotta make you feel good, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just messed up my bunny. How many times? Right? And Oh, I should show you guys my bunny. Yeah, go get it. Let me go get it. Go get the bunny table runner from two Jen? nights ago. Yeah. It's all quilted. I don't it's think she's bad. squared it up yet, though. I'll square it up real fast. I'll just warm it. Yeah, Kathy, remember you took the um the paper off and you lost your points? And I was like, 
How did you lose your points? It's foundation piecing. It's because she trimmed it before it was done. So just, just, just a learning opportunity. You won't do that again. So sometimes we make mistakes so we can learn. I need to stop trimming my thread so short because I have to keep re-threading my needle. Again, this is, this is what comes with being stingy on thread. I'm just giving myself a headache because I'm stingy on my thread. Done. I don't know why the iron's over here. Gives me a chance to pop out of sight, I suppose. Yep. Yep, don't cut off that seam allowance. I have done it. You know what else I've done? I folded it back. This is what I've done too. I folded it back to trim and cut off the extra cut off what I just sewed on. You did? Not not now. I've done it before, and then that's when it just, depending on where I'm at on that block, scrap it and start again, or, man, it gets so frustrating to cut off what you've already put in there. But those mistakes do happen, and they're learning moments, and sometimes that means you walk out of the room for a minute and take right. a break, and sometimes you just jump right in and fix the problem. It just, it depends on where you're at that, at that moment. This is true. Okay. Ready for the bunnies? Yep. Here's our Easter bunnies. Just in time for warm weather and spring. Being and outside and springtime. My three year old was in my sewing room while I was had him going today. And he's trying to uh, figure out the pattern of the bunnies. There are five different colors, so I don't know what pattern he came up with, but he was figuring it out. But there's our finished canning day cotton tail, tail runner. It has a cute green binding that I will put on this weekend while I sit at home and relax. Yeah, but, but, we, but we definitely take tomorrow off. Yes, tomorrow is our day off, you guys. And I, I, I need, need it. it. I need it. <laughs> I oh, need man. it. You want that in foundation paper piecing too? Nope. It's not that bad to piece yourself. It's just snowballing. Snowballing's not bad. Just use starch. Lots of starch. Or not star or a starch alternative. Or a starch alternative like breast press. Yes. It's fun. I like tiny piecing though. I find it I love tiny piecing. Enjoyable. Little pieces make me happy. I don't know why. Yep. But little pieces definitely make me happy. All right, let's get this little corner. Yeah. So we're back to our little geese in the corners again. This is why it's gonna be important to pre-trim. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, 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 I know, Mom. What'd she say? So I can put it in EQ8 and it'll give me foundation paper piecing templates. We're, this we're, is true. We're just going to make Terry stretch herself. Mm. Sorry, Terry. I could, I guess. There was a lady last year during the Moto Block Head Sew Along that turned every block into a foundation paper piecing pattern and uh, posted the templates. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I was like, that was really nice of her. That is nice of her. Because that sounds like a lot of work to me. It sounds like a ton of work. So on the one with all those little tiny stars, that might have been nice. So Judy, eq is a lot of fun. There's a lot, there's a learning curve to it. Um, EQ. It's, um, it's not intuitive. It's it's not, and it um, and it doesn't turn out instructions. No, no instructions. You get if pictures and cutting instructions. You draw, and sometimes you draw, you draw a picture. Wow. Wow. You, Plot out a block and it will round it to the nearest the nearest sixteenth of an inch. So it could be 
Yeah, sometimes it's, it's, it might need to be seven inches and thirty-two, you know, and twenty-seven thirty seconds. Yeah, it's, and that's what it would take to be accurate. And so you really have to. Um, it, it won't do it for you. It out for you, real. You, you kind of still have to, to kind of do the math. You got to know, you know, quilt but construction fun. and quilting math really to use it. Um, but it is fun to I've play with. I've seen a lot of people that like to use it when they are auditioning fabrics for a pattern. Because what you don't know is a lot of your fabric manufacturers have downloads of all the different uh, digital images of their fabrics mm -hmm. on their websites. And then you can put them into EQ8. And so when you um, lay out a pattern in there, you can audition different fabrics in different places and decide how you like it. Um, Terry, EQ8 is Electric Quilt version 8. It's a digital quilt design software. It retails for... 200 ish about 200 dollars um it's a very neat tool especially if you like designing your own projects or if you want to be able to take a block and transition it into foundation paper piecing you'll get templates um jen and i do most of our pattern design for the patterns right. we write I, for the shop in there i draw it up in eq8 and then i write it out so, myself like the rain the Allison Glass one that I'm doing right now, and I haven't showed you guys the finished product yet because it's not done. I sketched it up in EQ8 and came up with my concept, and then I cut it out and have been playing with it and putting it together. And when I am done, I will go back to EQ8 and put the accurate the colors you actually put, used, and well, and placement and everything where I actually ended up doing it. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a very good tool if you like to do the design work and to play with things like that um but it's not the most uh it's intuitive not program i've ever used so if you're expecting it to be really easy you might be disappointed yeah i did do idaho in eq8 i did that one in there um the cottontail pattern i grew up in eq8 jen's celtic clover one that she did last right month. Um, the sun one I did pretty manually. Pretty much all of them. The sun. The sun one I did manually, and then I I drew up the the designs to be put in the pattern in EQ8, but I designed the pattern itself on graph paper. Yeah. So it's it is it is nice, especially when we're trying to create images for you guys to have the actual fabric in them. Yes. Uh, the best way to do that is with EQ. Um. And I do like it. I won't tell you not to buy it because I do think it's a good thing. But uh, I wish it was easier to work with. Right. And I like to think I'm a smart kid, but computers are not my greatest. Forte. Not your strongest. So maybe that's... There we go. Mom says EQ8 retails for $239.95. Thank you. And what you get is a thumb this... drive. I got a CD. Did you get a CD? I got a CD. Well, I've got EQ7. My well, I have are... EQ8. I know. So, I have I got a disc and a license. It's the same as like when you buy Microsoft Word or Photoshop or... <laughs> yeah. Terry, I do that too. Um, she keeps shaking her head as if we can see her. <laughs> We're having a conversation here. Yes, That's Terry. Fine. Definitely. I agree entirely. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I do sit down and play with it. I mean, that's what happened with Idaho. I was busy sewing three other projects and was tired of them and so I had a thought in my head and so I sat down on my computer and an hour later I had an Idaho pattern well a design design and fabric requirements and fabric requirements so that's the nice part is it will give me fabric requirements and what I need to cut I usually then look at those cutting instructions and adapt because I them don't usually agree with them because I don't cut triangles um, generally speaking, like except this. for tonight, an EQ will give you the most basic instructions, which means it will tell you to cut triangles. And I look at it, I'm like, nope, I need half square triangles, so I need squares this size. Right. So then I take their cutting instructions and adapt it for my preferred methods for piecing, right, and quilting and pattern writing, because I like to think most of you guys don't like triangles as much as I don't like. But, I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you love triangles. Do you love some of the triangles? You're having trouble. My bobbin's too tight. What'd you do to it? I don't know. It wasn't liking me. I was, was trying to wind it. Remember? Oh, yeah. 
this is just breaking my machine. This is true. I had her wind a bobbin for me. It was working great. Whatever. Now I'm like struggling. Hello, Donna. There, that's better. I'm helping you. I appreciate that. I left my scrap bucket at home, so we're we'll borrowing through the scrap bucket tonight. Right. It's our cute little rainbow thimble here. Right. I have a scrap bowl at home, but I didn't bring it. I, I thought about it this morning, but it didn't happen. Yeah, I gotta have my scrap bowl. Right. So we bought the, borrowed the thimble off of the counter up front. Do you want to know something funny? Jen keeps pinning all these pieces right here, and she keeps taking the pins out over there. Yeah. I, I have a stack. Whole stack of pins I over have a stack there. of pins. I need to stop doing that to her. Okay. Onward. So I'm on I'm on the outer rim. Yeah, we're on the outside edge. So down Woo! to the last eight pieces. That's exciting. It is exciting. And then we'll have one more block. And then gonna fire her attention on the machine. Oh, man, a lot. I didn't do anything. I'm gonna give her a good service when we're done tonight. Okay. Maybe I'll do that in my day off. You could just sleep. That's kind of my plan. What? Oh, that actually pulled out. Oh, good. That's way better. Can I press it? No. Okay. Sally the ruler. I like that it's tapered down. Sorry, this is everything. I like that it's tapered down right here. And so when I go to fold the, the paper, there's not the big lip of a ruler edge to uh, compete with to fold it. So you can really just fold the paper all the way back. Right. It's, it's almost a sharp edge to push into it that I push my fingers back on. And then second, you just flip it right over and it's got a lipped edge. So watch. I so it just folds slide. right. Slide. It works kind of like a block lock ruler does for half square triangles. And it just, let me get this closer. Oh, close. Okay. Can you see that? Um, so it can just lock right onto the fold of the paper or the fold of the fabric to cut your quarter of an inch. And so it's really handy. I never realized how much that would be helpful, but it really is. Yep. I like it. I'm sold. I told you guys I'm not a gadgets person. I'm not. She says that and then she brings some gadgets all the time because she finds out how cool they are. Well, some, some of them are cooler than others, for instance. The perfect scissors. Oh my gosh. They're fantastic. It. Micro serrated blades. Oh my gosh. Liz said, what's the big deal with them? And, and then, then she used, used mine. I still haven't bought any. But you know how you know what the big deal is. I do. And I will I'm, I'm sure I will cave one of these days. It's it's not a mystery anymore, is it? Nope. Mm-hmm. Anyway, is Sally, did that answer your question? Yeah. There you go. You do. They are handy. Like I said, they come in six inch and twelves. I I don't know if they come in more, but those are the two sizes we have in stock. So he says that's it. That's it. So do they come in different colors? We had some yellow. Oh, there's yellow too. Apparently, if you're opposed to pink. Yeah, because like Jen said, this is we're having pink day right here. Apparently. Yep. So. Yay. We're getting close. Those roses are something else. Oh, there you go. Terry's got a yellow one. Oh, see? They definitely exist in yellow then. Because Terry has one. We used to have them in yellow I here in the like shop. I I've seen them in purple, but maybe I didn't. Never know. You might be dreaming. But. I'm dreaming about random notions we sell. That's when you know I've been at work too long. You might need a day off. <laughs> if you're dreaming about notions, you might need a day off. It's possible. <laughs> then I'll dream up quilt patterns or something else. To... <laughs> It'll happen. It has happened. I've done it. It's kind of taken over my life. It's a little embarrassing, actually. I was dreaming about uh, shop arrangements a couple of weeks ago. Were you? Well, as we were getting ready. So our new long arm arrived yesterday. And um, so we have, were planning what to do to rearrange that and right here where the long arm used to be. And um, 
I woke up one morning at like four o'clock in the morning and I had this whole concept laid out in my head and that's when you know you have problems. Um, Terry, do you remove the paper when you sew the blocks together? I do. You can leave it in until your whole quilt is done if you would like to, to quilt top. Um, is done. When I do units, like with the uh, cow quilt, I, I get the two units together. I like to still sew on that line. Yeah, so I will, after I get the two units together, take the seam allowance part out. But if I'm doing blocks like this, I take it out. Yeah, blocks like this, once you have it all set and it's exactly a like eight inch block, there's no need to keep the paper on because it's an eight inch block. When you're mm -hmm. doing abstract pieces, right, and I've got weird angles and then I leave the paper on longer. Partially, once again, for the stabilizing factor, like my unicorn pieces are all over the place and some of them are huge. Well, and, and if you don't get back to it for another six months together. or a year. Um, yeah, once again, I leave all the paper on though in the block until I finish the block for sure. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it depends on the project. This project, you can take it out. Um, abstract projects, I would leave it in until you're pretty much assembled. Yep. Personal opinion. Well, because sometimes you can lose your points. You can well, like, uh, especially with if because I if I can my... see that line when I'm sewing it, I can know point. not to sew over my point exactly. And because once you, like for those ones, the order that you put them together becomes critical again. Right. And so that helps have the paper. Mm -hmm. But that's. To our That's final all. triangle. Yay! Four more pieces. Woohoo! Oh, I didn't clip the top of it. Yeah, you're right, Mom. Like, if the outside has that a uh, not straight edge, it could be more stretchy. Mm hmm If I am gonna take it out and let it sit, I'll stay stitch it. Yeah, that's another way to manage things. And normally I would have trimmed this extra uh, paper off of here, but um, I left my printed ones at home, so I printed this off at about 701. So I didn't trim. That's okay. We'll just trim it all once you finish it. Right. I'm almost done. You know, four pieces to go. Hooray, hooray. I don't know. We have a fun block. So, um, but if you're wanting to do like a log cabin quilt or something like that, you can also buy, um, it's so Emma makes pads of log cabin papers and yep. pineapple block papers. And so what you end up with is a whole pad of pre-printed blocks. And so that's a I'm gonna wait to press till I'm good way to one. make that kind of a project too. Yep. Does anyone else make them sort of? I'm sure it's some other people from do, so Emma. We, but we recently got them from It's So Emma. Mm. What was that? She's, okay. Yeah, they know they, they do log cabin and pineapples for sure. Mm -hmm. Log cabin and pineapple quilts like that too are a great place for those um, foundation paper piece ones. We use the honey buns, if you're unfamiliar with the honey bun. The one and a half inch the strips. The one and a half inch roll strip rolls from the skinny jelly rolls. I'll show you. I keep wanting to make a honey bun out of uh, Halloween. A honey bun. Uh, yeah. So this is the Halloween figs honey bun. So it's the one and a half inch strips. They're fantastic for those pineapple quilts or log cabins. Lo the log cabins with the foundation paper, because now you've already got all your scraps and they're already in one and a half inch strips. Right. Huzzah. And you don't really have to worry about the pink edges because you're going to trim it. And so it makes them easy to work with. All right, because I'm on the outer edge here, I am starting a bit ahead of my sew line. Yeah. So she's going and, through the seam allowance this and time. And going past it, like to the outside here. Okay. And that's because there's nothing for me to add to it. Delma, the ruler we are using is called an add a quarter ruler or an add a quarter plus ruler it has a tapered edge on one side and a what would you call that pointed slotted 
sloped? Uh, no, why did it? That one's tapered. Oh, tapered. This uh, one has a grooved edge on the other side. Sure. That's a good term. I and so she wants it. But it's called an add a quarter, add a quarter plus ruler. They look like this. This is the long one. That's the short one. Okay, guys. Last one. You'll notice I haven't pressed these last ones, and that's because they're not in my way at all. So I'll just press all four of them at once. You might be out. Of what? The log cabin paper. No, we have it. I'll find it. I know we have the log cabin paper because I saw it the other day, but you know, like Liz said, we just rearranged the whole Ridge. There you go, Mom. That's the word. Ridge. Ridge. Thank you. Oh, Bonnie, Serena says your order is ready for Monday morning. And you're going to have so much fun with that. I don't know. Yeah, so guys, we are still limiting our hours 10 to 3 as long as the city lets us. Um, hopefully we don't end up having to close completely. But in the meantime, we have uh, place your orders online. Coupon codes are still good, people. So online. use the notions online, okay? The discount only applies if you place your order online. And I'm having a lot of people come in asking to use it in, in the show. order to try and convince you to stay home and social distance yourself you. as much as possible because we love you guys. Sally, I will show you where the new long arm is. In fact, I'll post a picture later because it's up and running. Um, but so those coupon codes, there's a code for kits and there is a code for, for notions. notions. Go ahead and use those. So you see notions. 25% yeah. off. Is it 20 or 25? Anyway, discount. Use it. Um, and just, if you don't, you don't even have to come in. We will meet you at your car if you call us. I will walk it out to or you. Or you can come in. Or you can come in and we'll just hand it to you. Um, the if city, you are in the shop, we're supposed to stay six feet apart. The city has asked that we work with a six foot distance. So, I love you all, but no hugs. Um, right, but... We're gonna do what we can. We want to stay open. We'd love to keep giving you things, especially while you're home and maybe Stuck a little bored. Okay, I'm gonna trim this up real quick. Okay, what I'm gonna do is use a normal ruler on her seam allowance on line. my seam allowance line, the outside of it. Okay, so nice solid line, quarter of an inch over. Okay, I didn't cut on the solid line. Don't do it. Yeah, so on this one, there's a dash line for the yeah. cut seam allowance. If you if yours doesn't have a seam allowance line, cut yourself a quarter of an add inch. Add a quarter of an inch. You should be familiar with that concept by this point in this process. Add a quarter inch. Yes. One more. She's almost done. Not bad for 30 some odd pieces. Yeah. And there we go. And we're done. Perfect little flying geese on an angle. So it's just, it's a really fun technique. I I enjoy doing it. Um, Especially on those days when you don't feel like being super precise. Right. This is, this is one of those projects that a lot of that precision can go, which is super fun when we're tired or stressed. Although I will add that if you get too tired, don't try and do this. Yeah, it's not always a late evening activity. No, I have to stop. Because this has been my main project in my sewing room, I really haven't been sewing much past like 8.30 or 9. Yeah. You get my tired and you start making mistakes. Tired. That's when I'm like, I think I'll go sit down and embroider for a minute. Yeah. I need to do something else. But yeah, this is it. Um, We haven't exactly scheduled our next one of these. We're going to see how the weekend goes. Um, But let us know Early if next you week. have an idea for us or what you'd like to see. Um, I know I got the suggestion for free motion quilting on a domestic machine and you know what? I wish I knew how to do that well. Yeah, I don't, I don't do it. I use a walking foot. I wish. But, but um, um, let us know anything else you'd like to do. I'd and love to do, we'll, uh, if you guys are interested, a binding yes. video. Would Actually, you like to do a binding class? We could do, um, we we could do both ask for that. machine and hand binding if you'd like. Um, Anyway, let us know what you want us to do. We'd like to keep doing this just because it's it's nice to keep interacting with people when hey, we're Brooke. told hi Brooke. When we're told not to get too close. Brooke is my roommate from like freshman year of freshman college. Freshman year of college. It was so long ago. I feel so old. But so happy to see you. 
<laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Dulce. But yeah, thanks guys, and we'll see you again soon. I All right, hope. early next week, sometime. As long as Ish. we don't get, you know, quarantined. quarantined to stay inside our houses. Yeah, that was so. bad. I'll, if yeah. I stand six feet from you, is it okay? I don't know, we're family, so maybe it can't. I don't know. Anyway, have a good night, y'all. Have a good weekend. Rest we'll of your see weekend. you later. We'll see ya.